Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. Today I'm going to be doing a video going over the one and a half year experience we've had raising Idaho pasture pigs. I'm going to tell you all about the pigs, at least what we've learned, and a brief little history on how they came to be one of our favorite pigs here on the homestead. So stick with the video and we'll show you what we got. So the Idaho pasture pig, a little bit of information about it, um, it comes from Brazil originally. That's where they originate. That's why their name um, is Idaho pasture pig. No, I'm just messing with you there. They're from Idaho. They're from Rigsby, Idaho, and they were developed by, um, I believe her name is Susan Harris, and what, Ferris, Susan Ferris, and their goal was to develop a pig breed that was similar to the Cooney Coon, which you guys can see we have some of those behind us. Um, Coon Coons are a really cool pig. They they don't they don't root. They graze. Um, they're actually probably the only true grazing pig around, and so that was a very appealing thing. The negatives with the Cooney Coons or Coon Coons is that they do not grow very fast, and they are not a large breed pig. So although they have a lot of characteristics that people like. They do not carry the the economical factor that people are looking for when they're looking for pigs. Usually pigs have a goal of getting to butcher weight within a very short period of time. A lot of old world pigs, you can get them up to weight in three to five months, which is pretty incredible, the amount of weight that they're able to gain in such a short period of time. So that being said, they wanted a, a pig that didn't take two to three years like a coon coon would in order to reach the size that was needed to take to butcher. They also really enjoyed the quality of meat from the, the coon coons. It's a, a red marbled type meat. That, that meat is something that they were hoping to recreate with a larger, more useful pig breed. And that's why the Idaho pasture pig came to be. Now, the Idaho Pasture Pig is a mix between a Berkshire, which is renowned for having some of the best tasting mass production meat around. They grow very quickly, they have a good flavor, and overall they're well natured. The other one that they crossed it with, other than the Coon Coon and the Berkshire, is a Duroc Pig. Those were bred primarily for their good nature and their size. So, in order to try to counteract the incredibly small size, of a coon coon pig they picked the duroc and the berkshire and you can really see that it, it has mostly the characteristics of the ip of the the coon coon in their looks in their personality and they were really bred with those in mind so i don't believe that it is a pure one third one third one third of all those all of those pigs they went through a pretty extensive breeding process and it wasn't until 2012 that breeding groups were being offered by them and they became an actual pig breed. So, you know, 2012, that's, it's 2023 right now. That, that was a good, good little distance, a, a good little time ago. So this pig has had 11, almost 12 years now to really establish itself and it is growing in popularity. If you go onto most of these homesteading YouTube channels or websites, you're gonna you're gonna 100% see Idaho pasture pigs as a pig that people are either trying, experimenting with, or just flat out using them as their, their go-to pig because of the, the good qualities that they hold. So I, of course, am no different than any of those other people. I really wanted to get a pig that was going to be durable and graze. I didn't want a pig that was just going to come out and just root and destroy our pasture. We wanted to set up a nice grazing pasture. We wanted to use a, a pig that would supplement the cost of feeding by being able to spend a good portion of its diet on pasture. Now, it is important to note, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you this. Pigs need a little bit of grain. You know, 10 to 20% of their diet has to come from those sources. There's chemicals that 
are only produced that way that they're not going to get through grass so you you really do have to you can't put them out and never feed them even though i know some people with coon coons they don't really feed them much they, they really just use them for pasture grazing and they seem to be okay but you got to remember if they're pasture grazing there's going to be other things like all around all around our pasture there are trees you guys can see and these trees have acorns and fruit and other things that they're grazing on so they are getting some additional food and not to mention like the the field that they're currently in we let it just kind of grow out all summer long and it is full of ragweed which is also very high in protein and very good for them to graze on our our electric fence line we had down at the bottom of our property we didn't rotate them and they they grazed it until there was nothing left and if you do not rotate your Idaho pasture pigs. They will do what any pig does and they will dig and use what little nose they have to be a rooter. And they'll do everything they can to get that, that food. So I'm gonna switch the camera around real quick and show you guys some of the traits of a coon coon that, we were try that they were trying to get into the Idaho pasture pig line. So this is Kevin. He's our coon coon. He's one of our coon coons. Get it, Kevin Bacon? Yeah, we're really clever. And this is Lena. She's our other little coon coon. She's actually not growing too fast, but these guys do not have really long, pronounced noses that they can use to shovel and root. Those are characteristics that they really sought when developing the Idaho pasture pig. Now, we we got we're going to do a little flashback for you guys we got two idaho pastures from blue belly acres in morristown tennessee we drove an hour and 20 minutes with a little tub in the back of our minivan and we picked up two awesome idaho pasture pigs now we did get them with we were going to get two what's called burrows not bar barrows they're they're cut males that do not have uh they're not intact so basically what that means is their manhood was taken away we were going to get two of those sorry i'm not trying to get political with those pictures but i just thought it'd be fun to throw that out there so when we were going over there they realized that they had oversold their males which was pretty bad for us we were upset about it a little bit they oversold their males and they did not have a male for us uh to go with our other our other cut male so in order to make us happy they decided they were going to sell us a male and a female so we got a male and a female and the female we were told she is a good idaho pasture pig but she didn't have as pronounced of a nose and she would not be what they considered good breed stock so they were able to let her go at the same price that we we got the mail so i ended up paying about 700 dollars <laughs> for two and i knew in my heart that i couldn't breed them because you know one was a male but i i wanted to keep the female and just see how much we like to breed and possibly you know breed in and that's why we got the coon coon with the intention of maybe breeding the coon coon and the idaho pasture pig together you know, my coon coon Kevin, he has not been a very promiscuous young man, so we never got any any babies in the year and a half that we've had. In fact, uh, he hasn't even really shown any interest at all in breeding, which is uh, something that was a little disappointing, but we're okay with it for now. So we got our, our two pigs, and we fenced in a large area in our on our property. Um, with the intent of letting them pasture raise. We tried electric fence, a uh, much bigger area, and they got out. Um, pigs are not able to regulate their, their body temperature, so they need a place to be able to cool down. And so we have this kind of wooded area that we fence back in where we have uh, our small creek going through. And as you can see, it, there hasn't been a ton of water back here. But this is their, their waller is what we call it. This is where they come, they jump in, they get cooled off. 
uh, and they, they really enjoy it. It's, it's definitely, you know, shaded, so they can really regulate their body temperature over here. And I think that's very important, especially with the, uh, the IPPs. They, they're a little hairier of a pig, so they, they're able to cool themselves down just a, a little bit more. But how we're, we're doing our water system out here is I've got this tower and these hoses come down and there's some nipples and we train the pigs to be able to drink out of those. These are the boys FFA show hogs that they're they're raising this year. They did it last year. You'll see some of their the previous year show hogs in some of the the clips I'm going to be showing you. Um, but water is very important. I always have fresh clean water. I actually just called my son because I don't think he's done his check out here today. And these two pigs which I'll tell you about in a little bit did not have access to clean water at the moment. So I'm going to be taking care of that. All right, so some of the benefits of the Idaho pasture pig, aside from them not rooting, aside from them being able to supplement their, their feed with, with pasture, is they have a very good temperament. They're so sweet. They're nice. It's actually really hard to finally take them in to be butchered just because they're such loving nice animals when we when we had to go butcher our show hogs last year they were such a pain in the butt and they totally totally destroyed our pasture i i really didn't want anything to do with them and i was happy that they were going to be processed but taking our idaho pasture pig male in it was a little it was a little rough but at the same time that's why we're doing this so I've seen videos where, you know, it's time to butcher the animal and cue the sad music, you know, cue the really heartwarming speech about how important it is to, to value the life. And not that I don't agree with that, but I'm not going to make this a theatrical show. I'm just going to tell you just straight up, it's difficult sometimes to, to butcher an animal that you've raised from a small young piglet to a to a 275 pound plus hog but that's why we did it that's the nature of it and i tell you what i feel a whole lot better knowing where my food's coming from knowing that i gave that pig a really good life had a variety of really good food it was able to kind of be free and roam and not be put in a tiny little pen and i feel good about that i feel really good about that because if, if you really want to think about it, most pigs are raised in a tiny little container, you know, just barely big enough for them to be in. And the reason for that is so they can just get them real fat real quick so they can process them. And these pigs, they did not grow as fast as they could have grown because of the way I did it. But at the same time, I feel much, much better about it because they were able to be free, eat some pasture, get some exercise, and just have a happy life, okay? so. That's my my story about what I feel about this. So it, it's not a it's not a sad day at the homestead. It's a happy day at the homestead because we're able to provide some food for the family and really accomplish some of the goals that we're trying to accomplish. So this is the female IPP. We decided we are keeping her, and she's going to be part of a breeding project that we're doing, and we're excited to just give give her uh, an opportunity to remain on the homestead and help us fulfill our purpose of being more self-sufficient. And we really enjoy her because she's got a sweet personality. The male, also very, very sweet personality. We really like him. If you look at her size in comparison to the Kuhn Kuhn, who honestly is only probably about three months younger than her, they're not even close. They are so much different in size, and she is much slower growing than our male Idaho pasture pig was. So realistically, in about 18 months, you're going to go from a piglet to a 250 to 350 pound hog that you can use for processing. You know, if you do the traditional way of growing them, you might be able to grow them faster, but if you're letting them just be raised on pasture, it'll take... A little bit longer so that might be a turnoff for some people that are used to getting a pig in you know three to five months that is ready for butcher size so keep that in mind cost wise I think you're gonna be about the same so 
not having to feed massive amounts of food to your pig every single day and letting them supplement on pasture is going to make a big difference in your, your total bill. So really the main sacrifice you have with these is time. Time is the one thing that you really lose with the Idaho pasture pig. Time is something that you have to really consider when raising your own meat. Now, if you're you're in it for the if you're in it for the mass production and making money selling meat, it may not be the best. However, pound for pound, you know, the jury's still out for us. We'll let you know at the end of the video what we think. But pound for pound, the meat quality is going to be better with an Idaho pasture pig. Generally, they're, they're much more richer in omega-3 fatty acids, and they're going to be a healthier meat because of their diet. It's a, a, a varied diet. You're going to have a marbled, fatty meat, and it's going to be a red meat, which, unlike a lot of other pigs, red meat's not as common. In the 90s, some psychos out there told everybody that saturated fat will kill you, and they decided to put sugar and everything to replace it, and that's why America's so fat, in my opinion. Instead of just realizing that saturated fat, the fat that we get from these beautiful animals actually can be good for you and healthy for you if you eat it in the right amounts and the right the right quantities. So the Idaho pasture pig is going to have a much more rich, fuller red meat. And I think in the long run, it's going to be a better product for us at, at our homestead. So we're going to try the meat. We're, we're excited to finally get to try it. It's been 18 months. But yesterday, we decided it was time. We, we set up a, an appointment at the butcher to be processed, and we brought our male IPP in. Now, the IPP, he was such a good boy. I'll show you clips of him the day before. We, we took him in. You know, we had him out. In... All right, guys, so tomorrow is the big day for this boy. This is uh, the day he goes in to be processed. And I promise you I'm not going to play some sad music and try to make people feel bad, including myself, for doing what we set out to do. But I do want to say some things about this pig. So I'm going to get in a little bit closer and show you guys some features on him and just kind of just tell you my, one of my, some of my final thoughts before uh, he gets taken in to be processed because he is a good boy. He's a good boy, huh? All right, well, let me show you. Okay, so here's our male Idaho pasture pig. He was born in May of 2022. It is now uh, September of 2023. So he is a little bit slower growing. Tomorrow I'll be able to tell you the exact weight he has. But I want you guys to look at this nose. Do you see how the nose folds backwards? So this boy is actually a pretty good specimen for Idaho pasture pigs. Um, I'm guessing he'll be about 300 pounds, but I'm not 100% sure. His nose, though the reason why that's significant, go ahead and pee for me. The reason that's significant is because that is what makes him a pasture pig, is it makes it really, really hard to root because they don't have a big shovel on the end of their mouth to to root up, you know, your, your ground, your dirt, your grass, your shrubbery. Um, and that's pretty cool because the coon coons that we have are, are the same. In fact, they probably have a little more of a pronounced snout, but their size is just so incredibly different. Like he is easily, and we got a coon coon at the same time. He is easily, he is easily two to three times his size. He's probably two and a half times his size. And he's a good boy. Like he, he got into this pen. He's gonna try to get out of this. He got into this pen with little, little effort, and you know he he will be missed. He will be missed on the farm. But he is the reason he was acquired by us and loved by us was because we planned on processing him for his for his meat. He was cut. He's castrated. So he was never meant for breeding, and. This is just this is the, the, the part that we're actually excited about because we want to fill our freezer. We've done one of our FFA hogs, but we really want to see the difference and compare the meat quality. Um, and we are told that he's a much darker, better, better quality meat. So we'll be showing you some of that too. But our our experience with the Idaho pasture pigs has been awesome. 
I would recommend this breed for anyone who's looking for a, a pig that roots less because they do still root. So do coon coons, especially it depends on their diet. And a person who wants a pig that will get to a good size. So the, the coon coons, they can get to uh, this size, but it will take them three years. This basically got there a little over a year and a half now. So I'm pretty happy with the size and the progress. So we'll show you guys us taking them into the uh, processing. Um, and then we'll show you kind of what the cuts of meat look like. understood so go straight back now come on boy good boy you're a good boy had him out in the we had him out in his, the trailer we loaded him up the day before just so that he would be ready to go the next day and he did so well we're very happy with him when we took him into the butcher he walked straight back and was able to uh you know not cause them much trouble he, they didn't need to you know be rough with them and you know he really did have a good life a good life and as of this morning uh, a swift painless death and you know we respect that so when he was taken in, um, we we were told it would it would take a few days. So right now it's Friday. We brought him in on Thursday, and they told him he would be processed on Tuesday and ready for us to to pick him up. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. And at the end of the video, I'll show you guys what we got and how the meat looks, so that you guys can kind of make a an actual comparison for yourselves to see what you think the the, the meat's gonna be like. That's ultimately what we got, what the goal was was to get the the, the meat from these these wonderful pigs, and, and and that's what we're we're shooting for. Now, you guys have been seeing my video here, and you see a different kind of pig in with the Idaho pasture pig. Now, I always butcher the name, and the kids yell at me for it, but I'm gonna keep doing it because I'm a dad, and that's just what I do. But the type of pig you see behind is gonna be our next kind of breeding project. It's called a Mangalista. And this type of pig is an old world type pig, and it is bred for its very high fatty meat. So they're a lard pig, and their meat is supposed to be prized. It's supposed to be like the Wagyu beef of, of pork. Now, you guys see, he, he is a, he's probably about you know close to 350. If our Idaho pasture pig was 275, he's probably close to 350, maybe even pushing 375. He's a much bigger pig. He is still young as well. He is about two years old. 
and we are going to be breeding him with the Idaho pasture pig and we're also going to get another female of his variety so that we can uh, we can have babies and raise our own meat and not need to get more. So he has been actively breeding with her and uh, doing a good job. So we're going to leave them together for a little while and uh, then we're going to let her back out and kind of do her own thing. And then when we get the female, we'll let him breed with that. So we're going to breed and kind of experiment because we want the qualities of the lard mangalista pig with the grazing features of a pasture pig so with their children which will be idaho pasture pig mangalista crosses we're going to cross here with kevin to try to get some of the more coon coon traits back in so the size of the mangalista dna will go into the pig and the idaho pasture pig will then it, the Idaho Pasture Pig Mangalises will breed with Kevin. But that's not what this video is about, so let me get back to this video. All right, everyone, we're back from the butcher. We've got a lot of meat, a lot of nice looking cuts of meat. You guys can tell this meat does look really good. The pork shoulders, the bacon, everything's super red and looks delicious. So. It is a very hard, humbling experience to, you know, butcher an animal that you raise. And I won't lie to you, that time where I knew he was in there getting ready to be butchered, it, it's a little bit of an unsettling time, but you really do kind of just snap out of it once you finally are able to see the meat and knowing that it's going to provide for your family. It's very important to us and it really is why we're doing what we're doing. So. I think in conclusion, our experience with the Idaho pasture pig has been fantastic. He ended up reaching almost 275 pounds and I think we've got over 190 pounds worth of meat. So really good ratio there. If I were to get into the economics of it, with the initial cost of the Idaho pasture pig, it, it is not as an affordable option as some of the other pigs like the show hogs that we're doing however i feel like the quality of the meat is going to be much improved the taste of the meat is going to be better i'll probably do some shorts so if you want to see what us tasting the different cuts of meat look like subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to see that hopefully you guys enjoyed this video this video was definitely made with some love definitely made with uh some heart so please uh if you like what we're doing over here subscribe and follow us and Give us a like so that we get uh, more people watching our videos. We'll catch you on the next time. We'll see you around.